The title of my message is The Offensive Cross. We all know cross very well. Everywhere we go, we find cross. Cross has become the religious symbol of Christianity. We find cross, as I said, everywhere. We find cross uh, at churches, on top of the church we'll find, as I said, this is a religious symbol. We all like to install cross at any cost on churches. At least 95% of the churches will be having crosses. If cross is not there, others also may not recognize that they are Christians. So that's the kind of culture has been built around us. And uh, we find the cross on altars, because it's a religious symbol and sometimes the altars will be in the front, sometimes they will be in the back, I guess. The cross in my background. <laughs> so uh, we find cross in the church and in the altar. We find cross at tourist places. And the, this is some unique uh, tourism. This is a forced to tourism. Build a big cross or something, people will come and see the cross and will make money out of it. So this is a force to tourism and our country is well known for this, okay? So we can find crosses in tourist places and we can find crosses where, when, uh, when, uh, the, in land that does not belong to anyone. If somebody goes first, first they want to go and put a cross. If it is Christian, definitely they will put crosses. And cross has become a spiritual symbol for us. So in spiritual activities, we use cross a lot. The moment we look at the cross, sometimes the kind of spiritual awakening that takes place in us, and that helps many people to uh, set their spiritual mood and uh, focus on God. So cross has become a spiritual um, sign for Christianity. And cross also has become a powerful a weapon. We have uh, weapons, guns and all to fight our enemies, but this has become a gun to fight against the enemies that are not visible. In exorcism, people use cross. So, and even sometimes many of us also, if you get scared in the night, hold a cross and walk. In childhood, we used to do that. Can you relate to that? So, cross become a spiritual <laughs> um, uh, icon where we feel some kind of spiritual power is there. And cross has, it has become part of our fashion. So it's in our necks, sometimes it's on our wrist, sometimes on our uh, earrings. So cross has become an ornament for us. And sometimes on our body, cross comes on our body. So here cross has become completely a fashion. And I'm, I wonder a lot of non-Christians also are having this uh, cross status. So it's become part of fashion these days. And ultimately we find crosses on the last destination of all, all of us, right? Especially Christians, they want to attend because they want to plant a cross on a dead body, uh, no, on a tomb, sorry. So we find cross everywhere in our lives. We brought this cross to from the beginning until the end of our lives, till the graveyard. And in doing this, we have totally distracted from the message that cross was communicating to us throughout the history and especially through the scriptures. What we did was we took our devotion, which is on Jesus, and especially the devotion we have on the cross of Jesus Christ, and we have domesticized it. So this is called domesticization of uh, cross. I'm not sure if it is English grammatically correct or not. I heard a couple of people use that word, so I, I got the confidence to use. Domesticizing the cross. We brought the cross and we put into every, as, every aspect of our life in which we got the memory of God, but at the same time, we have lost the power of the cross. What happens when we domesticize the cross? 
The power of the cross is lost when it was made an ornament or if, it, if we put it on altar. Can you remember the message of the cross when you wear it as an ornament? If the cross is lost, we won't be worried about the memory, but we, won't, we will be worried about the cost of the cross, cost of the pendant, right? So even we make this cross as an ornament, we lost its power. When we made this, we brought this cross on the altar. I'm not against keeping cross on in the churches. Kindly don't mind. Uh, and we are using this language also, altar. Okay. We believe that when Jesus died, the uh, curtain was torn from top to the bottom and there is no uh, gap in between uh, and there is no obstacle in between uh, uh, the people and then the altar of God and the presence of God. But still we call it altar because we put a cross over there and we have some, we feel some kind of reverence where the cross is. So we are again bringing the old covenantal kind of structure where there is a gap between God and humans, which Jesus has removed completely through his cross. We brought the same cross and built the wall again. And when we domesticize the cross, the power of the cross is lost when we made it icon to feel the grief. Of course, it reveals the price Jesus paid, okay? But the cross of Jesus is beyond it. Good Friday comes, as Monavo was talking. We think we, we, we uh, commemorate the pain and suffering that Jesus underwent. I understand that. We, became, we, start, we try ourselves to feel that grief, feel that pain that Jesus went. And we want to relate to that more. Some, I, I still remember as a child, if I don't feel guilty or if I don't feel grief on Good Friday day, Good Friday, I used to feel guilty. Is there anyone who felt that way? I guess many of you can relate to that. Am I right? On Good Friday, if I don't relate to Jesus' pain or the grief, if I did not feel sad or if I did not blame myself enough, I may not be a spiritual person. I may be the person who has a stone heart. So we started feeling those. Of course, it reflects the, the great price Jesus has paid. But if we remain and uh, if we could relate only to the grief of Jesus Christ and remain there, then we, we, we are in a pathetic condition, spiritually talking. Because the cross of Jesus Christ is beyond it. And then, why the cross of Jesus Christ is beyond it? The answer is, why the cross of Jesus is different from other crosses? There were thousands and thousands of people who had been crucified in the history. And among all those crosses, the cross of Jesus alone is unique. We are not worshipping or sorry, we are not uh, uh, using the cross of a, some uh, some person X as a religious icon or a spiritual icon, but we are using the cross of Jesus Christ only. What is the difference between the cross of Jesus and other crosses? The answer is obvious. It is because of the resurrection. All the people who died on various crosses it can be Egyptian cross, Roman cross, Greek cross, Latin cross, whatever we talk about. They died. They never rose again from the dead. But the cross of Jesus Christ alone is unique because Jesus rose again from the dead. And in fact, the usage of the cross as an icon started in just nine, from 9th century. Now we are using this cross. When early church started, they did not use the cross. They never had. They did not, at least they did not domesticize the cross. And uh, why? Why they did not domesticize the cross that we are going to see. And so using the cross as an icon of our faith started in 9th century. And uh, Jesus jumped on the cross, especially the cross of icons, 
in the 10th century. Our cross, here we don't have Jesus hanging on it. But from 10th century onwards, Jesus, he, uh, uh, you know, offered himself to hang on the cross from then. So uh, in those iconic crosses, we find him. Especially in particular communities of uh, particular sects of Christians only use those crosses. All Christians don't use the crosses uh, which has Jesus hanging. And very recently, just be less than 200 years ago, only started grieving along with the cross which is we are calling these days Good Friday, we have to feel guilty or we have to feel grief. We have to feel the pain and suffering of Jesus. This kind of emotional connection of, I'm not saying there is wrong with this. There is nothing wrong in relating ourselves with the pain that Jesus had gone through. But this particular practice started just very recently, near it's less than 200 years ago and which the entire world is following these days. Having said that, why, why the cross is so very important and uh, how does the early church connect? What, what uh, early church was thinking about the cross? The usage of cross was there from the beginning, but domesticization started from 9th century and emotionalization started from 18th century. How the early church kind of got connected to the cross? What were they thinking? For them, the cross is shameful and painful. You can see the image here. I know some, some of you may say, why are you picking some explicit images? Because it is so. It is explicit. In the early days, sorry, uh, actually the Romans... They adopted the cross from Greeks. Greeks adopted it from Persians. And Persians, they have Egyptian connections. And how they used to uh, torture people on the cross was really horrible. A person has to uh, carry their log. Here we can see this is called Tau cross, uh, where it doesn't have the upper portion. This is a Tau cross, the T-shape it has. This is a cross probably Jesus might have died on, uh, which is from uh, the Persian and then uh, Romans, which came in that lineage. Uh, they have to carry the uh, horizontal uh, log and then they would be nailed to those logs and they suffer. These logs may not be in proper shape. They would be in various shapes. And uh, these logs used to be very rough. They are not uh, polished and uh, fine-tuned, actually. So these people have to carry their cross and they would be brought uh, to a marketplace. We, we see uh, in the Bible that Jesus was cross, uh, crucified at Golgotha, right? A place of skulls. And the moment we hear it is like a mountain, there should be a hill. And he carried the cross on top of the hill and images also came like that only. So he died on it. But in reality, it is not so. It is almost like a marketplace. The Romans, they use uh, these places to hang people who ever revolted and who did not submit themselves to their laws. So, and they crucify them <coughs> in marketplaces so that everybody may see and they may get scared to revolt against the government. So these people would be hanged there and they would be beaten. And uh, the, because they're nailed uh, nailed to the cross, they would not be able to breathe. And some texts say that it takes uh, two or three days for people to die on the cross. It is not just few hours. It is such an excruciating pain that people go through. Even the word ex excruciating, it came from the very word cross, crucifixion, excrucia in Latin. From there, the word excruciating pain has come. Such a painful experience it is. Their body becomes burden for themselves even to breathe. That would be the experience on the cross. And they would be nailed to the cross naked. 
so that they may they, the shame may be shown to everybody and uh, they may be put to shame you know in many religions uh, uh, somebody who could not get a proper burial is like a, a big disgrace to the people right in telugu also say kukka chaavu chaastau raane means you won't get a proper burial the people who die on this cross they won't even get proper burial and they will be hanging on the cross dying taking one or two days or three days to die and then uh, birds will come and they uh, eat on their flesh that's how their burials will be that's place called golgatha place of skull it is because probably there must be many skulls over there because romans might have crucified many people pontius pilate crucified hundreds of people after jesus uh, death and resurrection so these people don't even get proper burial this is a place the cross this is talking about the pain it is talking about the shame that people can experience the worst shame can ever ex- a person in various religions can ever experience was not getting a proper burial and that also the people on the cross go through so for the first century church for the early church the moment they hear the word cross the cross of jesus christ their hearts will be filled with pain and shame it is talking about painful and shameful experience and that's why they are scared and they like they use the cross but they never brought it openly in the early church times but we find in the we find in the bible uh, <coughs> some unique <coughs> some unique scriptures romans chapter 1 verse 16 where apostle paul was talking about the gospel and he says for i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god unto salvation for everyone who believes i am not ashamed of the gospel why is he using such language it is because talking about cross is shameful in that culture telling about somebody like you know i am my master is someone who was crucified on the cross my guru is someone who was crucified on the cross my father is someone who was crucified on the cross my god is someone who was crucified on the cross to say this statement or this message is shameful that is the reason apostle paul was very strongly saying i am not ashamed of the gospel though jesus died on the cross i am not ashamed of it i guess you can relate to the pulse of the early church in another place we find in first corinthians chapter 1 verse uh, 23 oh thank you mr first corinthians chapter 1 verse 23 uh, there apostle paul says again but we preach christ crucified to the jews stumbling block and to the greeks foolishness look at the language again christ crucified he can say the christ who performed hundreds of miracles the christ who was resurrected also can say but he uses the word we preach christ crucified because again here the people are shy or shameful to say their master was crucified on the cross and apostle paul says it is the power of christ it is the power of god and we are not ashamed of it and we are not ashamed of preaching that cross and philippians chapter 2 verse 8 says how lowly or how um, uh, what we'll call uh, shameful it is to die on the cross philippians 2:8 says and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even to the death on the cross it is because that is such a shame, shameful experience that such a shameful death a person can go that's why apostle paul was using the words uh, it is um, as such a shameful uh, experience as such a shameful death jesus has taken and jesus uh, died he humbled himself even to die on the cross so it's talking about 
shame. This is what the early church experienced. This is what uh, they have uh, they felt uh, about the cross, and this is how they remembered the cross. And Matthew chapter sixteen verse twenty four. So the same verse is uh, Matthew chapter sixteen verse twenty four uh, also explains how this cross is burdensome or painful. Then Jesus said to his disciples, "If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me." If anyone wants to follow Jesus, have to take in the burden and the shame of his own cross and follow him. So the sin, I would like to connect you to the sins that early church has when they talk about the cross. And are we getting the same sense when we look at our uh, cross pendant or the cross tattoo or the cross or the cross on the church building or anywhere? It is because we have domesticized the cross and we have totally lost to the very sense that we have. This is only half of the story and we are going to... Uh, study the rest of the story. So, what does the cross reveal? The cross reveals the Roman imperial pride. Whoever revolts, whoever says they are uh, leaders for themselves, whoever says they are free people, they take them and crucify them. They kill people, however they want to know. There is nobody who can ask. They are, that is their power. So, the cross talks about Roman imperialism where they suppressed. Uh, thousands and millions of people. And the cross also speaks about Roman violence. They can kill people, but how violently they are killing them. How they are, how they are torturing these people. They can kill them in any pattern, but they are torturing them and killing. And in fact, this torturing and killing has stopped only after the French Revolution. From French Revolution, humanity started thinking, if you are punishing somebody, let them pass through easily. We don't need to torture them. But in the, early, uh, I mean, in the early ages of human evolution, we all tortured people. So this talks about Roman violence, the full stretch, full extent of Roman violence has been in, um, sorry, leashed upon Jesus Christ. And he has taken the full violence of Romans. And this talks about Roman humiliation, how the Romans humiliate people. It can be Romans of those days and it can be any other of these days. It talks about the humiliation. And it also talks about the, the religious pride the Jewish people had. Jesus healed somebody on Sabbath. They did not keep, he did not keep Sabbath. So let us crucify him. That, that was one of the uh, accusations they brought against Jesus. He claimed himself as the son of God. That's why we'll, uh, we'll crucify him. Why? Our religion, whatever our religion taught, whatever our Moses taught, is the best and the right and the perfect revelation. And there is no one who can have better revelation than Moses. The religious pride they have taken because of which they, uh, they persecuted Jesus and have killed him. So the cross reveals about these points, Roman imperial pride. It speaks about Roman violence. It speaks about Roman humiliation. It speaks about Jewish religious pride. And uh, it is speaking about the excruci excruciating pain and death. That was the cross. But the understanding of the cross, the next step that cross has taken, changed everything upside down. That is the resurrection. The third day, Jesus rose again from the dead after dying, after being humiliated, tortured. And third day, he rose again from the dead. I purposefully have chosen this uh, picture. Uh, it is because we have to always look at the cross through the resurrection. We, are, we can talk about resurrection, of course, but when we talk about cross, we can never ever separate resurrection from that. If we talk about cross, we have to look through the resurrection, explain through the resurrection, understand through the resurrection only, period. We have to look through that only. But still, surprisingly, 
uh, why can't we Christians have resurrection as a victorious and celebrating thing? Why can't we have the resurrection thing, the open tomb as an icon for Christianity? Why can't we Christian have the open tomb as our religious symbol or our spiritual symbol, which is a celebration? But why did we have chosen the cross? Why the church has chosen the cross? Why the apostles have chosen the cross? The answer is in the scripture. And then we'll look into the history as well. John, he writes about the importance of the cross. John 12 verse 31. This is how Jesus has perceived the cross. This is the word, word, these are words of Jesus who said, now is the judgment of the world, this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. Before his crucifixion, Jesus said this, the time has come. I'm going to be crucified. The ruler of this world is going to be judged. But who was judged basically in the experience? Jesus, he was judged by Pilate and Herod. And he died on the cross. But Jesus did not look at it, look at it as the Pilate or Herod were judging him. But he looked at these, his experience as the world is going to be judged. The ruler of the world is going to be judged. How is he going to be judged? That is going to happen in, through his resurrection and through the history. So that's how Jesus looked at it. And uh, Apostle Paul, and sorry, uh, Dr. Luke, who wrote the Luke's Gospel and Book of Acts, he considered Jesus is the Lord, no more Caesar. If you read Book of Luke, the first words of uh, Luke starts with, during the days of Caesar Augustus, there was a great <coughs> census, which tells <coughs> Jesus, uh, sorry, Caesar, uh, Augustus, or the Caesar is the Lord. And everybody have to go according to his rule and should be uh, listed, uh, I mean, recorded in the um, census. Luke only wrote Book of Acts. In fact, Book of Acts is the extension of the Gospel of Luke. And how does the gospel, uh, Book of Acts end? The Book of Acts ends with Acts 26, last verses. Apostle Paul being in Rome, being prison, imprisoned, he was preaching Jesus as Lord in Rome. Luke starts with saying Caesar Augustus was the Lord and he ends his Gospel saying Jesus is the Lord. How did it happen? It happened through the crucifixion and the resurrection. So that's how apostles have looked at the cross. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55. You know, we all were subjected to death. We all were under the suppression of death. Jesus submitted himself to death. And the cross is talking about the pain and the death. And now, Apostle Paul writes about, uh, thing, he talks about his, uh, the cross of Jesus, and these are the words he says, O oh death, where is your sting? O oh Hades, where is your victory? That is the very reason we put cross on the tombs. Have you ever thought why we put cross on the tombs? Christians were Christians, so we have to put, that's what domesticization of cross. If you domesticize it, it say it's our culture. If you domesticize, we say it is our symbol. That's why we put on the cross. But let me tell you the truth. Your, if your brother or mother or father or whoever died in your family, and if you put the cross and putting by, in, by planting the cross on their tomb, you are telling a message to the world that death has no control over my family. And because Christ has overcome the death, and he resurrected from the dead. And the symbol is the cross. And we have the same symbol on our family. My family is not the family which is hopeless. That is why we put the cross on the throne. That is the message of the cross. Yeah, it's emotionalizing. Emotionalizing. I know emotionally moving for me. We are the people of hope because of this particular day. 
is it the thing that we should grieve about you judge for yourself and then galatians chapter 6 verse 14 it says but god forbid that i should boast boast except in the cross of the lord jesus christ by whom the world has been crucified to me and i to the world here he is he is also talking about the religious um uh, affiliation he had before and now he says for me i love to embrace this cross and uh, than uh, sorry i love to embrace this cross and everything i had i consider it as rubbish all the religious understanding i had and i consider it as rubbish just give me a minute one of my so through the cross what did jesus do he put all the religious authorities religious understanding religious correctness to the shame the jewish people had the religious correctness and they said he is blaspheming against god he is claiming himself as son of god he is healing people on sabbath he is a sinner and crucify him and they crucified him and you know what they can choose for any kind of death but they also have chosen the death on the cross it is because according to their religion whoever dies on a tree is cursed forever so later also nobody can consider jesus as somebody who was anointed later nobody not even a person whoever uh, reads the scripture can understand for the generations that this person has been cursed and he can never ever be accepted as our brother not only our brother never ever be accepted as our lord that is a very reason they chose jesus to be crucified that's why apostle paul also points the same thing even the death on the cross in the verse we have read so through the resurrection jesus has jesus put the religious correctness to the shame he rose again from the dead and this is the victory over religion and um, historically the romans who humiliated jesus with the death on the cross you know where do you find the biggest number of crosses on the rome the dome of rome that was my first picture this place also is part of rome <laughs> you know who ever humiliated jesus through this death on this day they have taken the very humiliating wood as symbol of their sign and they are they are exercising the power today that is the cross of jesus christ and this cross is offending everyone this cross as it standing on roman tombs sort of tombs tomb tomb uh, tomb right excuse please forgive me for my poor pronunciation i guess you understand the roof on uh, tomb tomb dome excuse me yeah, the dome and it is telling them hey rome you you humiliated me and you killed me where are you now as he paul saying oh death where is your sting hey rome where is your authority where is your violence and throw whatever the violence you can throw jesus said and he has taken all the violence and what happened and those who persecuted him they have become the propagators of his very name can we say hallelujah today hallelujah absolutely right as we say this we are participating with him in the spirit so the cross of jesus is a victory over the violence of romans and somebody asked me the other day what do we say to the violence of uh, this particular militant group caused and killed hundreds of people i would like to say look at the cross a lot of orthodox christians were been killed in the middle east when they died this is what you will find in their pictures not fear if they had fear they would have run away all the martyrs 
they had pride and courage and their faces were shining as the face of Stephen was shining the day he was put to death with stone because they know the cross has won the victory. So the history tells those who are throwing the violence, ultimately, the cross is going to be victorious. That is a message of the cross. And the same message to the people who have been humiliated by any kind of thing. It can be religious because of religious affiliation. It can be because of poverty. It can be because of social status or economical status, whatever it may it can be. My, it can be because of minor, minorities or whatever. We are powerless or we don't have education. The answer is the same. Ultimately, they are going to rule. I'm sorry, ultimately, the cross is going to rule. Once upon a time, the Christians were minorities in Jerusalem. It started with just 120 people. You know, what is it now? It is influencing the world. And we, so many people talk about persecution is coming, persecution is happening. The answer I would like to tell them is look at the cross, what the cross has done throughout the history. That is the cross we are talking about on Good Friday. That is the power of cross. And there is no power in this. If we domesticize it, we lose its power. So we should not domesticize the cross. And there is one other way that we disarm the power of cross. You know how? In our personal lives, if we could not accept the forgiveness that was achieved, by the cross of Jesus Christ. We are disarming the cross. Jesus has forgiven me, I know. Oh, but I have done such a big sin. Can he forgive me? They were again domesticizing the cross. If we say Jesus may not be able to accept me, we are uh, underestimating the efficacy or the strength of the cross. If we say... Uh, you know, Jesus has done everything for me. There is something I should be doing. At least I should be being some religious thing. I should be doing this. Then only God will accept me. What we are doing, we are disarming the cross. If we even say, I, I should be obeying the commandments. Otherwise, you know, my salvation is questionable. Then we are disarming the cross. My brothers and sisters, Today, introspect yourself. Are we able to experience the power of the cross? If not politically, if not openly and throughout the world, at least personally, can you experience the power of the cross? Are you disarming the cross? Or could you experience? He said, this is the power of Christ unto salvation. If we, any time we say, I should do something else apart from what Christ has done for my salvation. It can be Sunday worship. It can be Sabbath. It can be keeping the commandments. It can be anything. We are disarming the power of Christ. So on this Good Friday, I would like to remind you. Understanding what Christ has accomplished through the cross is very much important than just grieving for what Christ has gone through. Any moment we can grieve. But if we don't understand the purpose of his grief, then there is, this grief makes no sense. We call it teleological understanding, understanding anything according to its purpose. The purpose of Jesus' grief is the victory, on the, victory of the cross on the Rome. The purpose of Jesus' grief was victory against all violence and humiliation. The purpose of Jesus' grief is to see us free from guilt, sin, sin, sin consciousness, and to live uh, soberly, righteously. And the cross, it encourages us to live righteously for Christ. So having said that, I would like to come to my conclusion. The cross is victory over all violence. 
So tell, talk about the cross when you talk about the violence by uh, terrorists or the state, rowdies, majorities, minorities, whatever. The cross, cross is the answer. Cross is the answer for all the persecution. Cross is the victory over all humiliations. It can be done outside in the society or it can be done within the family, anywhere. Cross is the answer for that. Cross is the victory over death. We don't need to be scared about it. Not only as the as cross we put in the graveyard tells that we have hope in Christ, even for our family. So cross is the victory over all religiosity. So we don't need to feel guilty. That's what cross tells us. We don't need to feel religious. We don't need to feel obligated to God. And so what shall we do? Let us not domesticize the cross to this and experience the power of the cross, which is very offensive as I told politically, it's very offensive. And uh, let us experience the power. And I would like to leave you with these words, which Apostle Paul was writing about the religious people. And he said, Galatians chapter 5, verse 11, And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, which means his old religion, what all see, religious practices he had, all the ten, ten Commandments you talk about, Sabbath you talk about, or whatever. If I preach the circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? If we teach those, the world will be happy. Okay, then he writes an uh, amazing statement. Then the offense of the cross has ceased. If we teach those, the offense of the cross is ceased. Cross is offensive and there is power in that offense, in that offensive nature of the cross. And I, this is my prayer that we may be able to relate to the power. Yeah, as we are commemorating the death of Christ. We may not get stuck with the grief, but experience the glorious victory achieved by Jesus. Thank you.